Hello and welcome to Fenextra TV. I'm Hannah Wallace and we're here at Money 2020 in Amsterdam. Kindly joining me now in the press lounge is Andy Ellis, CEO of Metal and Head of Digital Assets for NatWest. Andy, thank you very much for stepping away from the busy event to join us in the press lounge. Well, thanks for having me. Really good to have you on. Now, I know you're uh, very busy at this year's Money 2020 and uh, speaking on stage, the big picture stage, about the lessons challenger banks can learn from their predecessors um, in past years' traditional banks. So that's an interesting one. Tell us a bit more about uh, the angle and what you hope to cover on stage. Um, first of all, I hope to be helpful. I'm not here to bash uh, the neo banks. I think they're doing a fantastic job. Um, but I've been fortunate enough to, to build a bank metal within a bank NatWest, mm -hmm. so I can I can see the world from from both sides. So I think there are lots of lots of things that the challengers can learn. I mean, they've they've done a brilliant job in terms of transforming uh, the customer uh, experience, mm -hmm. um, but lots around compliance and making money and scaling safely that I think they can uh, they can definitely learn from the uh, the traditional banks. All right, okay, so a lot to learn then. Uh, what do you think are going to be uh, those main new challenges that challenger banks are going to experience and uh, how can we begin uh, to meet those challenges? I think on a, on a few levels. I mean, as, as they grow up, um, you know, it, you've got to really have a, a view on compliance and fraud and, and, and keeping people safe and the, the economy safe. Um, and you'll have seen from, from recent FCA announcements and Lord Agnew rightly or wrongly bashing Starling on, yeah. on, the, on, on the, the, the bounce back loans. Um, you know, there's some, they've got to grow up and, and there's zero tolerance in, our, in a regulated industry like ours for, for not getting compliance right. So I think that's, you cannot trade that off for, for customer experience. I think, I think that's one, one thing. Um, profits as VC uh, cash, is, I assume it's going to get less plentiful. Um, and and the, the investors are going to be looking to make money uh, and there aren't that many neo banks making money right now so mm -hmm. I think they're going to have to find a way of g not going for growth but finding ways of going uh, going for profit and, and that will require you know as, as interest rates go up some kind of traditional banking stuff like like lending uh, which is quite hard to do especially to, to consumers it's highly regulated sometimes they don't pay back um, and you've got to learn the skills to do that. And I think, I think there's, uh, you know, l figuring out how they're going to make profit and quickly is going to be quite important. Sure. So still some way to go then. So uh, we've covered the challenges. Can uh, we uh, go from there a bit more of a positive note, talk yeah. about some of the opportunities involved as well? Um, some of the opportunities for challenger banks. Well, I think they've got, I mean, the beauty of it is a fantastic platform. And, and as many of, of, are doing, they're going international. So you'll see lots of companies starting in the UK, going to Europe, going to, to India or the States and what have you. So, so you can see why um, that's happening as, as they, they grow customers and, and search for profitability. So I think that continues to be an opportunity. Um, the back offices that have been built along the way, um, you know, they can be monetized. So as you're seeing with, with many of them, they're taking their back office, their, their core banking systems and, and providing banking as a service. I think you, that is a trend you will see continue. And then I think um, there are a bunch of choices that, that neobanks need to make. One is, you know, do they want to provide a broad range of services like a traditional bank does? Or do they want to go into particular areas of profitability, whether that's for example, trading cryptocurrency, whether it's starting to offer mortgages um, and being a bit more specialized. But um, there, there's some great platforms, foundations and customer uh, customer bases on which to build profitable uh, products. Sure. All right. So watch this space. Now, coming back uh, to what you'll be discussing on stage um, mm -hmm. and the difference between challenger banks and these traditional banks, yeah. uh, the crystal ball question, as it were, how do you see those roles evolving uh, as we move forward? I think you will see a little bit of a shakedown. This is very crystal ball. Mm -hmm. well, this is just my personal sure. opinion here. Um, is I think there, should, there will be a shakedown. So, so you can't run it not making profit for, for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, so you might see consolidation in the market. Um, my guess is that valuations will drop. Um, some of the large incumbent banks might, might even acquire mm -hmm. some of these neo banks for their capabilities or, or for their customer base. Um, but I think you will see a consolidation uh, whether it's through kind of the weakest dropping off or some, some kind of acquisition style consolidation over the coming years. All right. Well, thank you very much, Andy. Look forward to catching up further down the line and reflecting on these predictions. Uh, but, Don't uh, hold me to it. <laughs> no, I won't. All right. Well, I'll let you get back to the event. Thank you very much for joining us. So, you're welcome. Thanks for having me.